Hello there, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a Crafty Thursday with Pickle Peppers Creator Cafe and Daryl Walter, me, at pickledpepperscreative.com. Hello, happy Thursday, happy Friday Eve. I like to say that sometimes. Friday, the day before, or, sorry, Friday Eve, the day before Friday first official holiday of the week, right? I call it Crafty Thursday. I call it Friday Eve and Creative Day. All of the above. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. So Thursdays are the days that I come to you to create um, a fun project. And today is no different. I am here to create with you today. So welcome, come on in. Again, it is Thursday, the 16th of March. We're halfway through, which means that we're getting, getting really close to spring, right? Super excited about that. <clears throat> so I'll chat a little bit to give people um, a chance to find me in their newsfeed, and then we'll get um, started pretty quickly creating tonight. I have a couple of things to talk about and then we'll make something cute. And then I hope you're inspired to create this weekend. I have a pretty creative weekend coming up, so I'm excited about that too. I see Julie is watching. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Crafty Thursday. Let's make something cute, right? <laughs> hello, hello. Um, and so you might notice I've, I've been sick for a few days, so I may sound um, a little nasally and raspy. I apologize for that, but I'm feeling better enough. Look, I was hoping all week long that I would feel better enough to be here with you tonight. So I got my orange juice and enough energy to be here with you tonight. So welcome. Come on in. All right, so we've been chatting a couple of minutes. We're going to chat a couple of minutes more. So I'm going to go ahead and turn down. And um, we really don't have a lot to um, to go over in terms of announcements. However, um, I did want to talk to you just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get turned down. And we'll talk a little bit. And then we'll get started on tonight's project. I think that you're going to like it. Hi, Julie. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Crafty Thursday. Super excited that you sh you're you here to create with me. So as always, I have um, a fun project that I think you're going to like. And I chose spring-like products um, from the annual catalog. I've been kind of stuck on that and gravitating because I have some favorites there that I um, suspect uh, because we are encroaching upon um, a new catalog that some of my favorite things might disappear. And uh, at this time of year, I am always um, happy and sad, happy for the new. It's just like spring coming in, right? You're happy for the new, but you want to hold on to the things that you, you like and you really love. So that's kind of where, where I'm at. So let's go ahead and um, get to it, shall we? One moment. We'll get turned down here. Oh, I noticed that I didn't get my other um, device hooked up. Also, we need to flip ourselves around, don't we? Let's see if we can do that. I have a new normal with Facebook Live. I'm trying to remember that. Hey, did you guys see me flip around? I'm magic. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and turn down and we'll get started. I'm going to fidget with my other device for just a moment. I noticed that it didn't come on. So normally it pops right on when I connect it. And it's essential because I like to see what you're seeing so I know that my hands are in the frame. Let's see, I maybe don't have it plugged up exactly right here. Let's try it again. Okay, I think we're going here. That's looking good. All right, are you guys able to see me good? I think we might be over just a little bit too far so I'm gonna move us so how are you how are you have you guys had a good week 
I noticed that it was raining today. That gets me excited for spring too. When it's raining and not snowing, that is an amazing, amazing thing. <laughs> and I'm super excited that it's that it's um, raining and not snowing here where I am in Michigan. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to tell you about really quickly is that I'm not sure if you noticed on my business page a couple of days ago, a day or two ago, I made a post about a contest that I'm having. And it's just, um, its purpose is um, just to have fun and be excited about the um, color change and the color refresh that's coming up at Stampin' Up! So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but briefly, with a new catalog, two things happen one happens every year, and that is we have a set of in colors that will be leaving us. Colors that we've had for two years. Um, so that's one of the things that happen. And I just want to show you really quickly in the catalog. So um, this is our current um, annual catalog, and this is page 122 that I'm looking at, and it shows the current in colors and then there's the brights on this page as well but each year we have a set of in colors that leave and we have a new set of in colors that come in so the way that you know is in the catalog it tells you that um so this set of colors are um the 2022 to 2024 in colors and then right next to them, you're gonna get the 2021 to 2023 in colors. So these in colors are going to be leaving us, um, and then these will move over and a new set of in colors will come in. So I'm super excited about that. It's one of the, so many things to be excited about with a new catalog, but it's one of the things to be really excited about. So we have that coming. And then every few years, Stampin' Up! will look at the regular color palette. So our colors come in um, four groups, actually. There are brights, as I alluded to here. There are neutrals, there are regals, and there are subtles, okay? Every few years, Stampin' Up! will look at these basic um, uh, staples, I guess, in terms of color, and they'll evaluate what's trendy and popular and what may not be so much, and then they will refresh these colors and do away with some and bring some in. So that is happening. So if you look back uh, up on my business page, I am holding a contest, and it's just for fun, but I am going to give away a prize. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to give away, but it will be something super fun, something that you will love, that you'll be able to use and create with. So I'm super, super excited about that. And really, the um, the way to enter the contest is you just have to tell me, and I give you up to five colors, um, that you think may be leaving. So you can cheat and use your catalog. And we have found out that there are some retired Stampin' Up! colors that will be returning. So if you have favorites, the way to get in the contest is you can give me five colors that you think are leaving and five that you think will be returning. And then the most correct guesses will win. And if you want to, for fun, you can even name what you think the new colors will be. So there's a thread that I started. Comment under that post. And then I'll do a drawing. Whoever wins, I am going to send you something super fun and super cute um, in the mail. You're going to love it, I promise you. Because I buy the things that I love. And I'm going to share with you what I love. I'm not seeing comments here. Oh, there we are. Okay, I see the comments. So that reminds me also, um, while we're creating, I'm really focused on what we're making. So if I don't see your comments, please, I love talking to you. If you have questions, I want to answer them. Leave them, and after the live, I'll definitely go back and um, chat with you, and I'll do my best to chat with you while we're creating. So in terms of um, stamp set tonight and bundle, 
This is one of my favorites. If you know me, you know that I love butterflies. I am um, afraid that this is going to be leaving. I wanted to have a chance to use it. And I have this uh, super cute and simple project that I'm going to be creating with you. And so this was the perfect, perfect excuse for me to use this stamp set. Oh, Julie, you're a girl after my own heart. Julie loves butterflies. Julie, I am enamored, super, super enamored and crazy about butterflies. So um, I'm going to be using the best butterfly um, bundle. If you haven't used it, here are the images and I'll bring those in. And there are dies. I'll show you the dies. We're also, maybe I pulled the gems out. Um, so they coordinate with the designer series paper. And of course, we're using the paper. Have to use the paper, right? So we're going to use everything that you see here on this page. Super excited. Um, super, super excited about that. So let's go ahead and get started creating. I chatted enough. I told you guys I like chatting. <laughs> and um, I think I, I've gone ahead and cut everything in advance, but I think we're going to cut two because I, um, this is a fun fold and I want to show you, um, how to cut the card base because it's a little different. And I know that I always make the declaration that it looks intimidating, but it's super easy. I am going to make that same declaration tonight. Um, th the card looks complicated. It is so easy and so fun and I know you're going to love it. And I would be enamored if you if you created it too. Let's take a look really quickly at the stamp set and the dies. I promised you that. Here are the little gems. And I also brought in the brass butterflies. I didn't tell you, I didn't mention these because I wasn't sure that we'd be using them. Let's see if I can. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Thank you. Thanks for the hearts and the thumbs up. So there are some brass butterflies. I thought we might use them. I don't know, but I dug them out anyways. And then here are the dies. Look at all those gorgeous wings. You guys, the fabulous thing about this, and if I had had the presence of mind ahead of time, I would have dug out, you know that I have a million of these cut out. This is one of those, any stamp set that has to do with butterflies and the dies, I never get rid of. I never, ever, ever. And so this goes in that forever collection for me. But the fabulous thing about these is you get different um, patterns. There's an outline um, and then an inside part to each of the wings. And they're all dies. If you don't want to do any stamping, you absolutely don't have to. And this is what I mean. Can you see that? So you see how there is an outline. This actually coordinates with one of the stamps and I'll show you the stamp set up close. But if you don't want to stamp and you don't have um, a lot of confidence in stamping, you can actually layer these and cut them out and get the pattern. Uh oh, let's not lose that. I would not be very happy. And it's the same for all of these. Can you see that? So that is scrumptious. And then you have um, a few with a little more detail. And then you have two different sizes of the um, the butterfly body. So this is really fun and fun and fun and cute. I promise if you love butterflies and if you're happy about spring and you're getting excited about, about it, this is a very fun set. Here are the little jewels. They're flowers. So these match our designer series paper. I'll show you it really quickly. I took out um, the whole big stack so that I could um, kind of fan these out easily and show you kind of what we have here in terms of designer series paper. Aren't these colors fun? Fun, fun, fun. Here's the reverse side. Look at that. Isn't that yummy? Yummy, 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 right? I promised you. All right, and then here's the stamp set. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thank you. Hi, Marie. Hello, happy Crafty Thursday. Super excited that you're here. You're right, Marie, super, super cute. I love these. And so here again is the stamp set. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and did some cutting 
um, off camera to save a little bit of time because I knew I had a little bit of talking to do. And like I said, this is a fun fold. So um, I don't want to rush exactly through it because if you come back and watch the video to recreate it, I don't want to have to have you rewind it like a million and one times. So I do kind of want to take a little bit of time. For that reason, I am going to cut the main card base because I want you guys to see that that process. Super simple, but I want you to see it. Hi, Anna. Welcome. Happy Crafty Thursday. So excited that you're here. Hello, hello. Hi, Michelle. Excited that you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here. You guys make my heart happy. You make my heart so happy. All right, so what we have here, um, this is Calypso Coral. It is one of the colors in the designer series paper. It is happy and spring, so we are going to be using it. I have a regular piece of cardstock. Let's see, I think we need to scooch over a little bit to make sure that I'm in the camera here. Thank you, thanks for the hearts. So we have a regular piece of cardstock. It is eight and a half by 11. And we're gonna cut it on the short side, which means um, we're gonna cut it lengthwise, halfway. That is four and a quarter of an inch. So we're gonna use both sides of it. If you make this card yourself, you will be able to get one card from a sheet of um, cardstock. All right, and so some of you may have seen this before, but it's been a while since I created it. So we're gonna do it again tonight. So, okay, we have our half sheet, which is 11 by four and a quarter. We are going to cut it down to 10 and a half. So we're gonna take a half inch off. So we need it to be 10 and, 10 and a half by four and a quarter. Whoops, let's get in there. Since I know it's 11 inches, instead of pulling the arm out, I'm just gonna take a half inch off and um, I'll achieve that 10 and a half inch um, piece that we need. And now we're gonna make four scores. We're gonna score at half an inch. So remember our card base, I'm gonna call this our card base um, is 10 and a half by four and a quarter. We're gonna score at four and a quarter. I'm sorry, we're gonna score at half an inch. And then we're gonna score at one and three quarters of an inch. And then we're gonna score at three and three quarters of an inch. And then we're going to score at five. All right. And then we'll put this aside. So again, those scores were half an inch, one and three quarters of an inch, three and three quarters of an inch, and five inches. Those are the four score lines. So we're gonna set this piece aside for a moment and then we'll bring it back in. Now the remaining um, half that we have, we're going to cut it at five and three quarters of an inch. So let's go ahead and do we, oh, we're gonna go this way. This way? No, this way. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Pete's. Okay, so we're gonna cut at five and three quarters of an inch. and then three inches. So we're gonna turn this around to three inches. So the end result will be five and three quarters of an inch by three inch. Everything else we can put aside and save it for a later project. So we have this, we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna make two score lines here. One at half an inch. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're done with all of the scoring. I just kind of wanted to do to see what it looks like and actually cutting it shows you and um, it slows me down too so that it's at a pace that you can come back and look look at it and recreate it if you want. So half an inch and then one and three quarters of an inch. 
there we go. So now we are done with um, the card base. These two pieces constitute the card base. Now I told you I done it off camera and I'm just going to double check myself to make sure that they look the same because I'm always afraid. And I'm gonna use the one that I previously cut because I wanna make sure that um, we have it correctly. Okay, and then our small piece. Let's double check that. Okay, that looks fantastic. I might have this upside down. I'm not really sure. But we'll we'll go through and double check. We'll double check our scores at the end. Um, but half inch, one and three quarter, three and three quarter, and five. That's what we have here. All right, so let's start with the larger piece and we're gonna bring in our bone folder. And we're just gonna um, fold and score on all of the score lines that we made. So there were four of them. And then the last little one, this is that half inch one that we made. And I'm gonna kind of check it dry. And then we're gonna bring in our other piece and we'll do the same thing. On the two scores that we made, we'll just kind of burnish them with our bone folder to make sure that we have nice flat folds. All right, now I have cut some pieces of designer series paper and I've also cut a piece of regular basic white. Remember we have two um, kinds of basic white. One, the thick basic white that we use for a card base. So. Um, our regular basic white is a little thin for that. And then for everything else, I use the um, regular basic white. I have a piece of five and a quarter by four. And this is the design that I chose. And this is kind of how it's going to layer so that you get a visual. And then I have two other pieces of designer series paper. I have one that's one and a quarter by four. And let's check the last one. We have is um, two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So this is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Oh, thank you, Michelle. My nails, Michelle says she loves my nails. Thank you so much. Michelle, those nails are supposed to be the birthstone for March, aquamarine. <laughs> All right, so I've also gone ahead, we're gonna fussy cut some butterflies. And I wasn't sure which of the two I wanted to use, so I have them both here. Um, they have Night of Navy, which also goes with, coordinates with this designer series paper. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on some assembly. So the larger piece of designer series paper is going to go in the largest open space of our card base. So we'll give it a little bit of stamp and seal here. Also, you, you guys, we're going to be using stamp and seal plus. We need a little bit of strong adhesive because this is a 3D card and it's a little interactive. So we want um, a little bit of a stronger adhesive just to make sure that it stays together. All right, so this is where our largest piece of designer series paper goes. We're going to flip this over and this is our one and three quarters by four inch piece of designer series paper that coordinates. It goes in this section, but we're actually going to flip over and put it on the reverse side. Looks kind of weird, I know, but you'll, you'll see why we're doing that in a moment. 
So we'll go ahead and we're going to place this right down. You'll be able to tell if you are recreating this card, you'll be able to tell um, which section this piece of designer series paper belongs to. I'll kind of bring it closely so you can see. Can you see that? It won't fit in any other section. So I think I did this opposite of my folds, but it's okay. We'll just fold them back. This should be folding. All of our folds, all of our score lines should be folding towards this piece of designer series paper. And I think I was a little hasty and I flipped it over, but it doesn't matter. It folds in both directions. All right, so our card is going to roll right up. That's what should happen. Did you see that? So we have all of our score lines. We placed our largest piece of designer series paper at the, the top. Um, it's the only place it can fit. We flip this over and our smaller piece, actually the smallest, um, went in this section, the only place it will fit. We'll fold this back over and all of these score lines should fold upwards towards um, the base of your card. Now, that having been said, this little half inch section that we have here, we're gonna put a piece of strong adhesive here. Remember I said this is a 3D card and it's a little interactive and we wanna make sure that we use a strong adhesive because we don't want it to fall apart when our lovely friends or family gets this card, right? We want them to be able to fold it and bend it. And you'll, you'll, you'll do that also because it has to fit in an envelope, right? Okay, so do you see where we put the um, Stampin' Seal Plus? Now, in order to fold this, this little piece is going to fold down. Um, how can I best explain this? Okay, so I'm gonna push this forward. So everything rolls forward. We have our um, strong adhesive on the half inch section. The half inch section plus the two sections below it um, will fold upward when you adhere this. However, the half inch section will fold backwards. So this is the part that's going to adhere to our card. And I wanna make sure before I tell you that, that we're telling the truth. Actually, let's not do it that way. Let's fold the entire thing up. I think it makes more sense like that. All right, so erase what I said. <laughs> so the fold that is closest to the four and a half, um, or four and a quarter by five inch piece of designer series paper, Let's fold there. I think that makes a little more sense. And then the top two sections that we have here, the half inch section and the at the three inch score line, we'll fold that over. And we'll take the entire section from the designer series paper upwards. So did you see that? I hope that made sense. We're gonna do it again. So here's our open card. We're gonna fold all the way up and then these top two sections will fold down and in and we're gonna go ahead. Keep your fingers crossed, you guys. I hope we did this correctly. And we'll go ahead and fold them down and there we go, voila, I think we did it. All right, I changed my mind mid card there. So uh, about where we were gonna fold it, what made the most sense when I explained it to you. Okay, so I hope that made perfect sense, but you see what happens here? Our card stands up, isn't that wonderful? All right, now we're gonna set this aside for a moment. Let's scooch it right out of the way because for now, that's all we have to do with that. 
we're gonna bring in the smaller section. So remember, we have a half inch, um, a half inch score line here, and then we have one and three quarters of an inch here. The remaining piece of designer series paper that we have is going to go on this section, the only one that it will fit on. So let's go ahead and adhere it right down. Add some stamp and seal. And we'll add our piece of designer series paper. And then we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. Not much, and a little bit of fussy cutting. Not much, and then we'll be done. And you will impress all of your friends. <laughs> I promise. All right, once again, the strong adhesive is going to go on the half inch section. So we'll grab our stamp and seal plus. I'm not sure if you guys noticed. This is amazing too, the stamp and seal plus. If you don't have it, you need this in your stash all the time. We do have tear and tape, which is a strong adhesive, and the tear and tape is nice as well. Um, it is just tape, it's double sided and you can tear it and it's super strong. Um, the Stampin' Seal Plus is a favorite of mine because it's in a tape runner, right? Just kind of go. And then this is our regular Stampin' Seal. But the Seal Plus is fantastic. All right, so that's all we have to do right now for this section. We're gonna set it aside for a moment and then we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. I am going to... Um, stamp a sentiment along the bottom here and I think I might do it in Calypso Coral. Yeah, let's do that. Let's grab the Calypso Coral. I grabbed all of the ink colors out that coordinate with this designer series paper because I wasn't sure which I was going to use, but I think I'm going to use the Calypso Coral and the sentiment that I decided to use is You're My Bestie. Fun, right? You are my bestie. I like it. Um, if you're new to stamping, the stamps that I'm using are photopolymer. It means that they're clear. You're able to see through them. It's fantastic because when you put them on a clear block, you can see right through the stamp. So for the sake of placement, it gives you a lot of confidence. Um, the thing about photopolymer stamps is that there's not any cushion. So in order to get a nice crisp impression, it's nice to, to have cushion. That having been said, I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Pierce mat and it gives us enough cushion to get a really good impression. And then I have just a piece of grid paper that I'm using for scratch. And we're gonna stamp the You Are My Bestie sentiment right at the bottom of our basic white layer. I'm just kind of tapping my stamp onto my ink pad. I'm not rubbing or scrubbing, but just tap, tap, tapping. And then right along the bottom here, we're gonna stamp your My Bestie. I'll leave about maybe a quarter of an inch margin there, just because, no particular reason. I just felt that that would look good. And here we go. So we can leave this here. Now, I said we we're gonna do a little bit of fussy cutting. And actually, just now, I decided that because we have these colors in our card base, I'm gonna wanna use this butterfly. So we're gonna do a little bit of fussy cutting. And honestly, if you have the dies, it looks like the dies will cut this butterfly out, or at least pieces of it. I'm not sure if I actually tried that, but fussy cutting um, is pretty harmless. And if you don't have the dies, well, there's a bonus there too because you get to cut out the image, right? And it's like you had dies. Stampin' Up! has done all of the work with this gorgeous designer series paper and they printed the butterfly, so you can just use the butterfly 
as your guide and kind of cut around it. It's called fussy cutting. I don't know why fussy cutting. I imagine in my mind, I think it's called fussy cutting because nowadays we have so many different um, machines that cut shapes for you and electronic cutters. We have a Stampin' um, Cut and Emboss machine. And there are lots of machines that cut shapes these days. And the old fashioned way was with scissors. When I first started paper crafting, I'm not gonna tell you guys when that was, because then I'll, I'll tell you my secret about my age and ladies don't discuss their ages, right? <laughs> and so when I first started paper crafting, my son was a baby and he's over 20. So I can tell you it's, you know, more than 20 years ago. You notice also, let me tell you this while we're going, you notice how I'm moving the paper as I'm cutting and not my scissors. If you're fussy cutting, you need a nice pair of snips that are short and sharp with a good point and um, small enough to get in small places. And then when you're cutting, you just kind of move your paper around instead of the scissors. So you don't let the scissors follow the paper. You let the paper follow the scissors. That's just um, a little tip. Um, but so there weren't, when I first started paper crafting, there were not machines that I can remember. So I have been paper crafting enough, long enough to have seen all of those things come to life. We only had scissors, and back then, there were um, scissors with all kinds of shapes. There were like Rick Rack and Curvy, and things sure have changed a lot since those days, but fussy cutting is still around, just to tell you. All right, so really, this is all the stamping that we're going to do. Look at that. Is that amazing or what? Tell me that's not amazing. We are going to add a little bit of adhesive. I wonder if I want to just leave those. Um, should I leave the wings of the butterfly up? I could do that, couldn't I? Thank you. I could leave these wings right up. I don't know. Something tells me that I want to. So I'm going to kind of bend this just a little bit. I could use my bone folder. I'm going to bend it a little bit at the body on each side. I kind of curled the wings. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Butterflies don't have curly wings, do they? My butterflies have curly wings, <laughs> but I don't think they should be curly. That's okay. It's still a lovely butterfly. And I think, you know what I'm going to do? Let's grab my busy box. Close this ink up so I don't make a mess with it. I'm going to grab my Stampin' Dimensionals because everything is better with dimensionals. And I have this little piece that um, is left over after you have used all of your dimensionals. I'm just going to cut a piece of that because it's kind of like um, in a line, right? I'm going to take that and put it right on the back of my butterfly so I can give it a little bit of dimension and then we're going to stick it down. I think that's fun. Don't you think that's fun? Let's do that. Oh my gosh, I love it. I don't know if it's crooked or not, but it doesn't even matter to me. Isn't that cute? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Michelle, or um, Marie. I do think the colors are so spring and so fun, and they don't show up on camera um, as beautiful as they really are. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move this back out of the way. So we're gonna bring in, we're gonna bring in the other piece to our card base. And this is going to be the top. So this is gonna go at the top of our card. This is bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and adhere this right to the other workable piece of our card base. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, I'm in love. Okay, so let's give it a little adhesive. 
easier to adhere it at this point than to do it after we put it together, I think. It's been a while since I've made this card, so I didn't actually assemble it beforehand. I thought I'd do it real time with you guys so you can see the method to my um, process. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. And so I know in this moment that it's getting an embellishment. I know emphatically. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you for the hearts. I love it. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is bring our card base in. So let me turn it towards you. I got a tip from a YouTube viewer, someone who follows me on YouTube, and she said she was wondering why my cards were always upside down and I had to really put some thought in it and look at my videos and I think a lot of creators when they're creating they create towards their audience where I create towards myself and turn it towards my audience so I'm going to try to do that a little more frequently but that just came to mind but for this purpose I'm going to turn this back towards me, and then when we've gotten it assembled, um, I'll turn it back towards you so you can see the final pro product. All right, so remember our, this is like a chapstick tube. Doesn't this look like a chapstick tube? <laughs> so this is our card base. It's like a chapstick tube. We're going to smash it all the way down, which this is what you would want to do to fit it into a regular A2 envelope. You'll smash it right down. And then to adhere it, this time we're going to definitely fold both sections back here. But again, the adhesive is only on that half inch. We're going to fold this right down. Oh, we also need some adhesive here. I almost forgot that. Let's do that really quickly. We're going to fold it towards the back. So here's the front. Here's the adhesive on the top. We're gonna flip it over, add a bead of adhesive here, and I'm using the Stampin' Seal Plus because we want strong adhesive. Let's bring this back in. So with your um, chapstick tube facing you, the flat part towards the top, so it's going in the correct orientation, top and bottom, the same thing with your extension top and bottom facing you in the correct orientation. We have folded both of the score lines to the back and we want them flat and open, all right? We are going to align this edge to the center. Be careful not to go over the top, but we're gonna put it as close to the top as we can without going over and careful to get it centrally um, placed and then when you're happy we're going to go ahead and press down now remember our adhesive is here in the center and here along the bottom did that make sense all right and then voila here we are. Isn't that so cute? Thank you guys so much for the thumbs up and the hearts. Thank you. Here's a side view. Let's bring it into view so you can see. It's like a double box. I don't know. I just, it reminds me of a chapstick holder. But isn't this the cutest ever? And then it stands up like this. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. So when you're standing it up, because I've bent it, we've bent it so much, I'm just going to kind of bend back and forth to make sure that we have it, the weight distributed evenly. And then you'll get a card that stands up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marie, Michelle, Julie. Isn't it super cute? And tell me that this is not the cutest butterfly you have ever seen in your life. The colors are fantastic. They're very happy, very bright, very spring. In fact, let me tell you which colors these are. This is going to be Parakeet Party, I'm pretty sure. Um, of course, the Calypso Coral. We have some Fresh Freesia. 
knight of navy and then just basic white oh michelle says i want to make that card michelle make this card i will be so happy if you make it i have seen a ton of different versions and um directions for this card so you'll find it out there um, i've made it it's been a long time you'll find it out there but this is the simplest um, most direct set of instructions that I found for this card. And the other thing about it is I opted just to use designer series paper and not to mat it with another color, which I've seen except for our focal because we want our focal to look good, right? Um, because it's already heavy and I want to make it any heavier and you want it to be able to stand up because whoever you give this card to, you want them to be able to um, continue to enjoy it. All right, so the last thing we have to do is decide on embellishments. And again, I brought in the coordinating um, embellishments. Let's see what else. Oh, there's crushed curry. It's in that designer series paper as well, the, cr the crushed curry. Um, let's see if it tells us the colors. I'm pretty sure this is Parakeet Party. Should we use the brass butterflies or should, I feel like we, I feel in keeping in line with the colors, we should use the, um, these are called fun flower resin shapes. We should use these, shouldn't we? Oh, Marie, you do. You need this paper. <laughs> it is so super, super cute. I love it. It's super fun. The patterns are fun and even the patterns on the reverse side are super fun. All right, so let's grab, yes, I agree. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle says, let's use the fun flowers. I agree 100%, and I trust you guys because you have fantastic taste. You never steer me wrong. And I think we're just going to put them on this focal point because I feel like we should. And um, we could actually go with any of these colors, except we didn't use the crushed curry. So, I feel like, um, I feel like we should go with, let's go with the parakeet. Let's see, where are we going to put this? I want to make sure that it's seen. Let's put the, the big one here. And then we'll do a couple of little ones, but I want to make sure that we're able to see them. Let's put one in the corner here. And, hmm, boy, let's grab a small one and we'll put it, uh, I want it to be kind of balanced. Hey, I may need to put more. I don't want them to be, let's put it here. And I'm going to try and move this one over just a little bit. See if I can pop it up. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's just move it this way. That way they're not symmetrical and all in the corners. That would not have made me happy. Oh, there we go. Squee, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Super, super cute. The last thing that you could do, because we have the main sentiment. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for the thumbs up and the hearts. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that you like this card. I, I super, super duper like it. Um, and as an afterthought, and we can probably go ahead and do that as well. And then we're going to double check. We're going to double check the, um, the score lines because I want to make sure that you're able to have some success when you recreate this. But on the reverse side, you could cut a piece of five and a quarter by four inch basic white. And then you could put your inside sentiment right on the back here. Because we have our main sentiment, you're my bestie. But we might want to write or add another sentiment like a regular card, right? So we could cut five and a quarter by four, stamp our sentiment, and write on the back with it. And keep true to the design right fun 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 all right so let us let's see i'm gonna double check let's bring our stampin 
trimmer back in. I'm going to double check those dimensions for you. And maybe we should cut it. Let's cut it. So I was kind of hasty earlier. All right, so we're going to cut at four and a quarter of an inch. Our score lines were right so we need four and a quarter by ten and a half so I think I might have cut just a quarter of an inch off I think that's what happened instead of a half inch but I'm not sure all right we have our ten and a half and then we're gonna score at half an inch one and three quarters of an inch Double check. Oh, well, maybe it's one and a half. Let's bring this in. Maybe it's one and a half. Half an inch? No, one and three quarters of an inch. Three and three quarters of an inch. I told you right and five inches. So we did, we had it right. So half an inch, one and three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna do it to make it a believer. Three and three quarters. I don't know why it didn't look right. And five. All right, and then let's just roll it up. was absolutely correct. I don't know. It looked kind of goofy. I think it might have been that first half inch cut that we made. But there you have it. All right. Fantastic. Don't forget we used the Fun Flower Resin Shapes. As a bundle, we used the Best Butterflies and the Build a Butterfly Dies. And we used the, I think I took the card from the designer series paper, but everything can be found on page 36 of the annual catalog. And it's upside down, but the designer series paper is Butterfly Kisses. It is six by six. And that's it. We came out with this very cute card. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and say good night. One moment and we'll turn up. Hello there. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. Thank you for allowing me to bring creativity into your world. You're so welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Super, super excited to share with you. I'm glad I was feeling better enough. I'm sorry for my um, sniffles and raspiness and congestion, but I felt good enough to be here. Um, it's all I could think about all week was being here to create with you. So thank you so much. For some of you, I will see you for class this weekend. And for others of you, I will see you soon. Um, have a very crafty weekend. Make the card. It would make my heart happy. Have crafty fun, you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.